Hey guys, if you've been following along, you guys know I just bought this property. But what you don't know is I just ripped it completely apart. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys all of the breakdowns that I did. And then by the end of the video, I'm gonna go over all of the numbers that I am going to expect to show you guys why this was a good deal. So let's get going. Hey guys, welcome to the Home Zone where we help you multiply the assets you own. Like I was saying, we are at this property. I just got the demo completed. I got my little lantern. I actually found this in a property, believe it or not. I put some batteries in it and it works. So let's use this. Okay, so let's start here. Guys, look, the wall is gone. Do you guys remember this? This was, this was a mirrored wall. Uh, I'll put a little clip here, right? Here's the mirrored wall. This is here, the mirror wall. Over here was another wall that is completely gone. Look at how wide open this property looks now, now that everything is out of the way. It looks so much bigger. And this is the, this is the effect that I wanted. Now, we are not done though, because what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna cut a hole into this wall here. By cutting a wall, a hole into this wall, we're gonna be able to go look into the next room, which is the kitchen. And by looking into the kitchen, it's just gonna look that much better. I brought the lantern because you never know what lights work and what lights don't after a demo job. So here we are in the kitchen. They left it alone because I'm gonna be reusing all the cabinets. I may change out the countertop, but I'm gonna leave those for now. And then back here in this room, I am going to possibly put the washer and dryer back here where the stove is. So the stove is gonna go over there, obviously, and I'm gonna put the washer and dryer there. Now let's go down into the basement and we're going to show you what went on down here. If you guys recall from the old video, this basement was full of stuff. There was stuff everywhere. There was walls, cut out, shelving, everything. There was stuff everywhere down here and now it's all gone. They even got rid of the oil tank that used to be right here. The big giant oil tank, now it's gone. But what I gotta do, and this is a tip for you guys, do you see this? These are the oil pipes that would fill up the oil tank. I have to cap those off because there have been situations where the oil tanker comes by, connects to the pipes, and then tries to fill up the tank that's not here, but what they end up doing is they pour 3,000 gallons of oil into your basement. So now you and the oil company are in a lawsuit because they're trying to charge you for the 3,000 gallons of oil you got and you're trying to sue them for ruining your basement, pretty much. Just dumping tons of oil down there. So that is, that is something that I gotta get to immediately. Um, right here, back here, there's closets and trash and just a bunch of stuff. But now it's wide open. It, there is a smell of oil because I guess they spilled some as they were trying to take the oil out, but a little bit of kitty litter should handle that. Okay, let's take a look at the upstairs. All right, our first stop is the bathroom. The bathroom is an interesting one because I left everything, as you can see. We got the toilet and the tub still here. Everything else still here. I took this out, but I did not realize the vanity was on top of this wooden platform. That's gonna pose a little bit of a problem. So I'll figure that out though, not a big deal. But I just didn't realize that it was sitting on top of that. So stay tuned to see what I do about that later, but I will figure it out, no big deal. As you can see, all of the flooring has been ripped up, all good. But all the panels are still here. Ripping up all the floors just lets me see the floors. These are not floors you finish. These are floors you cover. Unlike my other project that I finished the floors, these ones, you're covering these. You're gonna put a little, little plywood down and then you're gonna put some flooring on top or maybe you just put the subfloor and then, or I'm sorry, the uh, underlayment and then floor on top. Here in this room, there used to be a closet here that was made after the fact, but we ripped it back out. So this is how the room was supposed to be and now it is back to where it was in the beginning. This ceiling actually looks okay. We actually might rip out this drop ceiling and then put a regular ceiling in there. Now let's see this bedroom here. Again, flooring, the floors are out 
And if you guys remember from the last video, we had closets here and now they're ripped out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably reuse the closet openings and just make it a little deeper by coming out a bit. So we're gonna add like two by fours and then we're gonna frame out a deeper closet. So we're gonna reuse the openings that are here for that, for the closets here. But the rest of it, the rest of it is in good shape. We're gonna make sure that everything is free of cracks, free of gaps, free of debris, free of scrapes, and we're gonna make sure it's perfectly functioning. But so far, the demo job is looking good. All the floors, again, are out. Next stage would be to make sure all of the electrical works correctly, and then we're gonna touch the plumbing. We're gonna make sure that the plumbing's good. And then in terms of framing, we're gonna make sure we close up everything. Let's go back down here. I'll show you what I mean. So one, we're gonna make sure we fix stuff like that. We're gonna fix all that. And then we're gonna make sure this is all framed out nice the way it's supposed to be. And then spackle and paint and all that. So stuff like this, we gotta, we gotta handle this. Now, I wanna teach you guys something. Right here, these two pipes here, these are for the heater. That goes up and down. When you demo walls, you have to be careful and be mindful that there might be pipes like that somewhere else in the house. People like to just rip walls out like crazy, but they don't realize that there might be pipes. Like in this wall, there might be pipes. I don't know if the pipes are over here. I don't know if the pipes are here. I don't know if the pipes are here. They're somewhere though. They're somewhere in this wall or they might not be at all. But I'm gonna cut a hole in that wall and then I'm going to cut this doorway open a little bit. I'm gonna cut it open to here because right now this opening is a little narrow. This, this much makes a big difference when you're trying to put the appliances through, if you're carrying food, if you're, whatever it is. The, the, an opening that's a little wider is that much better. And then we're gonna stop right before the outlet so we don't have to mess with this too much. And then by leaving that there, by leaving that, because the wire goes up and the wire goes down, we don't have to reroute the wiring. So that's a plus. After I cut the opening out, I'm going to hang little pendant lights and the pendant lights are gonna make this place look really, really nice. That there is a weird problem. <clears throat> so that is, it's kind of like wallpaper, kind of like. And we're gonna have to cut that out and then we're gonna have to plaster a really big area right here, I'm afraid. Or we might just rip it all down and put new drywall up. So that's, that's something that we may do. So stay tuned for all of the fun things that are coming up. All right, as promised, I was gonna go over the numbers and tell you guys why I bought this deal, why I think it's a good deal. And I'm gonna break it all down so that you guys can analyze your own deal. So here are my numbers. $54,000 for purchase price. The closing costs were $5,000. The rehab is gonna be approximately $25,000. The holding cost, meaning taxes and insurance, maybe utilities, that's an, an additional $2,000. My all in is $86,000. The real question though is, what is the property worth? Is it worth $86,000? And the answer is, of course not, because if it was worth $86,000, then hopefully I wouldn't be paying all in for that because we as real estate investors, our job is to buy things at a discount. Always, that's your like rule number one, buy at a discount. So if I'm all in for $86,000, hopefully it's worth way more. And if you guys were curious, that demo job, that costs 1,600 bucks, okay? 1,600 bucks, so just in case you guys were wondering. Now, let's take a look at the numbers. I believe that the property is going to be worth $175,000. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that nuts that I can buy something for $86,000 and then it be worth $175,000? And here is my dilemma, and this is where I need your help. I hear, here I have option A and option B. Option A is where I would refinance at 75% loan to value. If my value is 175, a 75% loan to value would be $131,000. 250. If I pay myself back $86,000, then this is what I'm going to cash out. $45,250 goes into my pocket. I want you guys to think about this for one second. If you had a $60,000 salary, a $60,000 salary from your job, you would be walking away with $45,000 after taxes. Here in this situation, I'm getting a $45,000 check. 
completely tax-free because it's loan proceeds. This is a cash out. I'm not selling the property. So I'm getting a check for $45,000 simply because I bought this property and I renovated it. That's it, right? And I didn't even do the renovations. Somebody else did it, which is the crazy thing. So I'm buying a property that's worth $175,000. I'm buying it for $86,000. And even if I didn't use my own money, so this is $86,000. Let's go to the slide before. If you notice, I don't have finance cost here, right? I don't have any finance cost here because it was my own cash. But even if I borrowed the money, this $86,000, I have $45,000. I can cut into that $45,000 and pay somebody for borrowing their money. Let's say you were the one who lent me the $86,000. Well, I can say, hey, let me borrow the $86,000. I'll pay you back $86,000 and I'll give you $15,000. I'll give you $15,000 out of the 45 that I'm getting. That means I still put $30,000 in my pocket and you got $15,000, which is a big payday for you too for doing absolutely nothing other than having the money. So you see how I could have gotten in this deal using other people's money and then $15,000 goes into your pocket and then $30,000 goes in my pocket. But here I use my own, my own cash and $45,000 gets to go into my pocket. It's an amazing thing. People work the whole entire year at $60,000 salary to make this much money. I get all of this and I get to keep the property. It cash flows, right? It cash flows. It appreciates over time it pays down the mortgage and there are tax benefits it's nuts so that's why even if you're working a nine to five you want to really consider becoming a real real estate investor now here's where i need your help here's option b option b same same value one hundred seventy five thousand dollars, 65 percent loan to value take less money because i don't necessarily have to take all of it the loan would now be one hundred thirteen thousand seven fifty. And then when I pay myself back, I walk away with $27,750. The difference between the 131 and the 113 in terms of monthly payments, monthly, monthly mortgage payments, it's about $100. Would you take the difference between these two numbers, right? Would you, would you, the difference between these two numbers, 45,000 and 27,000, it's roughly $18,000. Would you rather have $18,000 in your pocket today but then get $100 less in cash flow every single month and have a bigger loan? Or would you rather take a little less money, have more cash flow, about $100 more in cash flow every single month, right? But then you have $18,000 less in your pocket. You guys tell me, would you take option A or option B? If you guys aren't a real estate investor yet, then you won't have to choose option A or option B, but I want that to be your reality one of these days. And it doesn't have to take a long time for you to become a real estate investor. I've had friends who just learned how to become real estate investors, and then in 60 days, they did their first deal. I'm not saying you will, I'm just saying that this is what has happened. 60 days, they became a real real estate investor, and they made $10,000. That's totally possible, because I've seen it with my own eyes. And I would love to help you guys become real real estate investors as well. So if you guys need help becoming an investor, learning what you need to know, check out the Hone Zone community. Go to honezone.com slash community. There you will see off-market deals just like the one I showed you where you guys get to have all of that equity. You also will get a support system. You guys get to go there and ask questions. You guys will see what other people are doing. You will network with other investors all across the country and you will hear about what's going on in the industry. So you're always up to date with what's hot. So check out Hone Zone community by going to honezone.com slash community. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button because we release new videos every Monday and Wednesday here on The Hone Zone where we help you multiply the assets you own. All right, guys. Well, that is it. I'm Hone Tai. Let's multiply.